Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 47 of Super Sports, the review series for Gran Turismo's selection of exotic super sports cars, as the name suggests, vehicles which are between sports car and full-on supercar, and some of these arguably run the line between the two, and not just in the way of supercars, some actually run the line fairly close to sports car or super sports, others run the line closer to being super sports slash supercars. And, as with most things on the internet, there is, of course, a difference of opinion, and certain people think certain cars are in different categories. That's fair enough. For the sake of this series, I'm including this car as a super sport rather than a supercar, although an argument can be made for both. Now, the car is the Audi R8, and we've already, of course, featured the 4.2-litre V8 version, which is my personal favourite version of the car, and now we're featuring what is by far the more popular choice, actually one of the most popular exotics in the game, the 5.2 litre V10 version. Now this car shares much of its mechanical DNA with the Lamborghini Gallardo, so it would be interesting to compare the two and see which is the better car. Except it would be were it not a complete washout in favour of the Audi because for some reason this car is allowed to have significantly superior performance to the Gallardo, which is kind of unfair considering how similar they are mechanically. Now they both start out with relatively similar specs, but the Gallardo fully tuned puts out around 800 horsepower if I remember correctly, whereas this car actually puts out some of the highest power of any exotic in the game, 1141, and that really is up there, that's as high as some Vipers, not far off the Alfa Romeo TZ3, that's some pretty insane power for a car like the R8. It's certainly justified, but it just seems a bit strange that it's allowed to have that much, whereas the Gallardo is nowhere near that. And that's a shame, because the Gallardo really does have the potential to be even quicker. Now, speaking of performance, the fact that this car does have 1141 horsepower and 700 foot-pounds of torque means that it's pretty much guaranteed to be, well, rather quick, to say the least. And the fact that it weighs 1297 kilos isn't too surprising at the same time, given that it is an Audi. They make their cars well, they put a lot of effort into them, they're well engineered, there's a lot of kit in the car, a lot of luxury, and that shows. The fact that it's also all-wheel drive adds a little bit of weight, and 1297 kilos is heavier than some others. It's still not breaking the bank, though. So combine that together, and you'd be expecting this car to be possibly even one of the quickest in this category, or even in the game as far as road cars go. And you'd be right, because it is. It's extremely quick. The top speed under its own power is around the mid to sometimes even high 290 region, and with NOS and Draft, of course, it can go even quicker. The fact that it's also all-wheel drive endows it with incredible launch off the line. It's, again, among the fastest in the game, and it can even dispatch cars which you would never think it would have a chance against in especially short-distance drags, but to some degree longer drags as well. As far as overall performance, this is a car which, interestingly, in a similar way to the Lamborghinis on the game, which isn't too surprising, is predominantly a good car for its low and mid-range acceleration. And although the top speed on this car is very good, the top end acceleration to get to that top speed isn't quite as quick as some other cars with a similar spec. The Viper, for instance, will easily dispatch this car for top end acceleration, although for low end and mid-range, the R8 V10 will have the advantage. The shorter the drag, the bigger the advantage. It's kind of like a Veyron in that way, it really launches off the line with a lot of gusto. Now as far as the PP, it's pretty high. 673 PP is very very high for a road car, and it's kind of a shame actually that we can't modify this car in terms of bodywork, and that's kind of strange. You cannot modify, for the most part, the V8 version either. The difference being though, a crucial difference, that the V8 version can have a flat floor, which increases the PP even further, whereas for some strange reason this car cannot. If you could fit this version with a flat floor, which would actually benefit a lot around the track, the PP could even be around the high 690 region, maybe even bordering on 700. So 
As far as road cars go, it is one of the highest in the game in terms of all-round spec. The power of a TZ3, similar kind of torque that you'd expect from, say, an Italian exotic, generally. The kind of weight that is more akin to a German model, which is appropriate, they do tend to be a bit heavier because of the tech, and a PP which is up there with stuff like the Viper, the GTR, and some of the Vision GTs. So for an all-round package, it certainly looks very good on paper, and the straight-line performance can, as we already said, beat most other cars in the game, in the road car category. One of the best things, though, about this car is not just its pure spec and performance, which is obviously very good. One of the reasons why I personally think that this is a good car is because of the price. It costs a fraction under 200,000 credits, which really is fantastic value for how much sheer power and performance it gives you. Even if you buy this car purely as a drag machine, it will still serve you very, very well. What about around the track, though? Because some Lamborghini or R8-based vehicles can be a little bit temperamental on Gran Turismo 6, to say the least, as far as handling. And to some degree that is there with this car. It is a little bit twitchy. It's surprisingly unpredictable for an all-wheel drive car, and sometimes that can be a little bit annoying. But it's not really the kind of car that I would recommend as a track car anyway when you're running full power. For lower power levels, though, it can be a good track car. So if you're looking for incredible performance for the money, you should definitely check out the V10 or even, to be honest, the V8 version of the R8. Both are very strong straight line cars. So that's it overall for this particular episode. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.